Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Tayo po ay magbukas sa ating pong mga Biblia sa Deuteronomy chapter 32 pa rin. Kung maalala niyo po, dito po din po tayo nag, nagbukas ng, ng Bibles last uh, Tuesday. Ngayon po sa verse 9, naman po ibabasahin natin. Uh, sabi po sa verse 9, For the Lord's portion is His people, Jacob, His allotted inheritance. Ang ganda po dito, no? sinasabi po dito ay ano ay ang Panginoon po, pinili po niya si Jacob or Israel bilang kanyang inheritance. Um, ibig sabihin po ng inheritance, to be uh, uh, Yahweh selected or elected uh, Israel to be His people, His own, His very own people. Yahweh sovereignly chose uh, Israel as His people in the Old Testament. At napaka-clear naman po nito sa Biblia. But this was not the exclusive hindi po ito naging uh, permanently exclusive. For because of their rebellion against God, the scripture says that the Gentiles who are not His people shall become His people too. In fact, sabi po sa Romans chapter 9, verse 25, as He says in Hosea, I will call them my people who are not my people. I will call her my beloved, my, my loved one, who is not my loved one. Sa, sabi po sa uh, NIV no? if there is a group of people th that the Lord has set to elect or to choose as his inheritance and his portion forever they cannot be like the rebellious Israelites they need to be a holy people stamped with righteousness changed from the inside out a su supernatural outside source of help must be present to that particular group of people to make this possible. And you and I belong to that group of people. Tayo po yung mga pinili po ng Panginoon. And when we were born again, we were made new, born of the Spirit into God's family. We belong to God. We have become His portion, His inheritance. And God has become our portion forever as well. We will be singing po a song, uh, ang title po nitong song nito, We Belong to You Alone. It, this is a song of pledge, a song of pledge to the Lord that uh, we indeed, our life belongs to God and we, are, we should pledge our faithfulness to the Lord. We should pledge to the Lord that He alone is the one who we will worship. Tayo po ay lumapit po sa Panginoon. Panginoong Diyos, maraming pong salamat, O Lord, sa patuloy na pagpapaalala niyo po sa amin na kami po, Panginoon, ay inyong mga pinili bilang inyong mga anak, Panginoon. We have become your people, O God. We, were, we used to be not your people, but you have shown us mercy. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for indeed, indeed this is your grace na kami po ay naging anak ninyo, Panginoon. And this was made possible only by because of your son Jesus Christ who died and redeemed us from our sins, Lord. And we were made holy because of him. We were made holy because of his righteousness, Lord, because of his sacrifice, his atoning sacrifice on the cross. 
and Lord we are sealed with your Holy Spirit and we know that we belong to you and to you alone and we pray Lord that Lord out of our gratefulness to you we will indeed live our lives in obedience to you Lord uh, live our lives honoring your name Panginoon and pledging Lord our our devotion our love only to you and to you alone Salamat po Panginoon this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ Amen Amen Let's uh, come and worship the Lord uh, through this song
You know, steadfast love for us, Lord. Your mercies that are new every morning, Panginoon. You clothe us, O oh God, with your righteousness. Lord, O oh God, we thank you, Lord. There's nothing, O oh God, Panginoon. Lord, you have Panginoon, with, with help from us, Lord God. Salamat po, Panginoon. You have given us all, O oh God, that we need, Panginoon, in this life, O oh God, Lord. For we have, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, who is Lord, our, the mediator between man and God, Panginoon, who made himself, Lord, as our high priest, Panginoon, interceding for us, Lord, for his saints, O oh God, for his brother. Salamat po, Panginoon. We thank you, O Lord. We bless you, Lord. Salamat po, Panginoon. And we pray, O oh Lord, that your Holy Spirit will continue to move in our hearts tonight, O oh God. As we listen, O Lord, to your message for tonight, and even as we pray later, Lord. Salamat po, Panginoon, for we are your people, O oh Lord. We belong to you and to you alone, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening po, our brethren. Tonight, we will continue the topic on faithfulness from our Fruitful Life series by from the book of Jerry Bridges. And last Tuesday, we already looked into the first of the last three in the set of uh, in the last set of the fruit of the spirit, which are faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So tiningnan po natin yung faithfulness. And we saw last Tuesday that faithfulness has its two applications by being trustworthy, which means that we should be honest. And the second one is that we need to be dependable or reliable. And that faithfulness means that we are trustworthy and reliable in all things, no? Lalong lalo na po siguro sa ating po mga duties, commitments, and responsibilities. So ngayon po mga kapatid, titignan po natin yung pangatlong point ano po sa libro po ni Jerry Bridges which is about faithfulness applied in unswerving loyalty all right it is faithfulness as as applied in having unswerving loyalty sabi niya the faithful person is not only honest and dependable but also loyal the word has come to have a connotation of sticking with someone through thick and thin there is perhaps no greater description of loyalty than Solomon's words, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Given the spirit of the times today, our environment, our culture, really favors disloyalty. No? Given our culture, our culture is a hotbed. Ano po? It is a very, very favorable environment to promote disloyalty instead of loyalty. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, sabi po dito, but realize this that in the last days, difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power, avoid such men as these. So dito po sa 2 Timothy chapter 3, which describes to us the characteristics of people who live in the last days, and we know that we are now in the last days. In fact, this is probably the last days of the last days. And one cannot expect faithfulness and a and loyalty in a culture like ours. Bakit po? Because people are primarily loyal to themselves. People are lovers of self. Sabi po dito sa 2 Timothy 3. People are lovers of self. So, the, the loyalty is unto one's own interests, one's own gain. And how can you expect loyalty when according to this verse that in the last days, people are not only lovers of self but lovers of money, people are boastful, arrogant, ungrateful, unloving, irreconcilable, and malicious gossips. 
So kung ganito po yung mundo po natin, mga kapatid, sa mga oras po na ito, sa mga panahon po na to, then no wonder, no, no wonder we find disloyalty in relationships, no? Example na lamang po siguro yun pong disloyalty or unfaithfulness, lalong-lalo na po sa mga marriages po today, no? Na lalong-lalo na po no sa uh, infidelity, okay? Uh, sa atin po wala pa po tayong law, the, the, the divorce is not yet a law, no? But in other countries like the United States, no? Napakadali po to bail out, no? Napakadali for a person, for a partner or a spouse to just call it quits, no? Just call it quits with his or her spouse when the going gets tough, when it becomes too difficult already, no? Wala na yung loyalty, wala na yung commitment na till death do us part. And you find it also manifesting even in our work that a lot of people today pag medyo merong difficulty, medyo nahirapan ng kaunti, no? It is easy to just transfer to a new work, no? Of course, if the work is going to be available, no? Why? Because people are really loyal to their own interests, no? They have loyalty to their own career path, no? So, kung ano yung merong gain para sa kanila, no? So, loyalty is not part of the values culture of today's world anymore. But it is not the same, my dear brothers and sisters, when it comes to us who are Christians, no? Because we know, as we've said last Tuesday, that faithfulness is the character of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So if we are walking in the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit will instill faithfulness and loyalty in our lives. Ano po? It cannot be that we have the other fruit of the Spirit, but this grace of loyalty is absent from our lives, no? The opposite of loyalty is disloyalty, of course. The opposite is unfaithfulness. The opposite is betrayal, no? The opposite is distrust of a person. So uh, these are the things that we commonly found nowadays. Now, we will find that the Apostle Paul was not immune to disloyalty and the betrayal of friends. No? Even during the time of the Apostle Paul, it was not yet a time like ours, but he was already experiencing no, what he wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 3, that people are lovers of self. No? Bakit po? In 2 Timothy 4, sabi niya po kay Timothy, yung kanya pong pinaka loyal na disciple make every effort to come to me soon for Demas having loved this present world has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica so napakasaklap ano po na yung pong disciple na yon ni Paul Demas deserted Paul no at the time of his difficulty he deserted Paul and has gone to Thessalonica. And the reason was because Demas was in love with the world. No, Demas was in love with the world. Now, it continues, sabi po dito, Crescens has gone to Galicia, Titus to Dalmatia. And then in verse 16, you will find, at my first defense, no one supported me, but all deserted me. So even the Apostle Paul, who would expect that he would encounter a time in his life when all his friends, all his co-workers in the ministry would actually desert him. But it is written here in the Bible that there was indeed a point in his life when no one came at his defense. No one came at his defense. And in fact, everybody, everybody deserted Paul. So but far from making Paul bitter, we will find in the scriptures following this passage that Paul found strength in the Lord. So here we will find, my dear friends, that nobody is immune to unfaithfulness and betrayal. Kahit si Apostol Pablo po, wala pong immune sa betrayal and unfaithfulness po ng ibang tao. 
Kasi kahit nga po ang ating Panginoong Jesus, ang ating Panginoong Jesus, who is already the most perfect, the most perfect leader, the most perfect shepherd, the most perfect discipler and mentor, he had a Judas. He had a Judas among his twelve. The only issue, my dear brethren, is let us not become betrayers of trust. Amen? Let us not become betrayers of trust. We may be betrayed. Others may be unfaithful towards us. But the most important issue is that we should pray to be able to manifest the fruit of the Spirit, which is faithfulness and loyalty. From the Schaefer Institute of Church Leadership, sabi po dito, loyalty is remaining committed to those whom God has brought into our lives and has called us to serve even in times of difficulty. Now, that is uh, a very good definition. No? Loyalty is remaining committed to those whom God has brought into our lives. We cannot be loyal naman po no to everyone no to everyone because that's not possible logistics no uh, and reality wise no but we need to be faithful to those whom God has brought into our lives those that God has brought into our life and has called us to serve even in times of difficulty bakit po because my dear brethren God works through people God works His sanctification in our lives through people. God uses others to carry out His plan for our lives and those around us. So the people that God has put into your life right now, my dear brothers and sisters, they were put there into your lives right now for your good, for your sanctification, and you were also put into their lives also for their good, also for their benefit and for this for sanctification. A most beautiful example of loyalty is yung loyalty of Jonathan with his friend David. You find this in 1 Samuel 18. Now it came about when he had finished speaking to Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David and Jonathan loved him, him as himself. Saul took him that day and did not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David with his armor, including his sword and his bow and his belt. So napakaganda po nung demonstration of the loyalty of Jonathan, who was the son of King Saul and who was supposedly and the who was supposedly the heir to the throne of King Saul. But God left King Saul and the God replaced King Saul and the because King Saul was not faithful to the Lord. So King David, who was a man after God's own heart, was the one who was chosen by by the Lord. So Jonathan, who was the son of King Saul was a dearly beloved friend of David. So here we will find that Jonathan removed his robe and armor and gave it to David as a sign of loyalty to David. And the book as a sign. Though he should be the next in line to the throne, but here we will find that his heart demonstrated loyalty to his friend David, to the point of sacrificing his right to be the next king of Israel. Can you find a friend like Jonathan? We often talk about David, but can we find a friend like Jonathan who would, in loyalty, sacrifice his very own right, his own right to be heir to the throne of Israel? Jonathan loved David and was committed to God's plan for David's life. So, Actually, that's the heart of Jonathan's loyalty. He was committed to God's plan. He was committed to the divine plan, the divine program of God for Israel and for David, and he wouldn't go against it. No? So, nirirespeto ni Jonathan yung, yung plano ng Panginoon para sa Israel, no? para sa kanya pong people, and for David. And Jonathan 
was loyal because he saw the bigger picture of ano po, of being submitted selflessly to the greater and more eternal plan of God. So, the question, my dear brothers and sisters, is to whom should we be loyal? Now, we don't have sufficient time to discuss you know, various types of loyalty to different types of relationships, no? including yung ating work. No? But at least there are three relationships that we should have unswerving loyalty. At ano po yung tatlong pong yun? The first is that we must be loyal first and foremost to God before being loyal to people. Ulitin ko po. We must be loyal to God before being loyal to men. Amen po? Now, this is very, very important. Let's look at an example in Acts chapter 5. It says here in verse 27, When they had brought them, meaning the disciples, no, because they were now preaching in the name of the Lord, they were now healing and doing miracles no, in the name of the Lord Jesus, they stood before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to continue teaching in this name. And yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. So these words come with a threat because they were warned, they were cautioned. No, Actually, they were forbidden not to teach anymore in the name of the Lord. But it says here, But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. We must obey God rather than men. Friends, our loyalty to God always takes precedence before everything. So out of their loyalty to God, the apostles continued preaching the gospel even if they were being forbidden by the council, by the high priest. Ano po? Even if they were being forbidden, they disobeyed that restriction. No? They disobeyed the high priest from, from preaching in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you remember in Matthew 22, nung tinanong po ang Panginoon if it is right to pay taxes to Caesar, ito ang sagot ng Panginoon. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. Ang ibig sabihin po noon, the Lord Jesus Christ defined the limits of loyalty to the authority of human beings. What belongs to Caesar belongs to Caesar. But what belongs to God belongs to God. So if there is going to be conflict, no, if there is going to be conflict in our obedience to God because of men, then without question, my dear brothers and sisters, without question, ang loyalty natin ay sa Panginoon. So for example, kung pinapagbawalan ka, for example, na mag-worship sa Panginoon, pinagbabawalan ka, for example, na magbasa ng Bible, na manalangin, pinagbabawalan ka, for example, na magpunta ng church, no? In the end, you will have to make that decision that your loyalty is unto the Lord and not to men. Alright? So, that may be tested, no? That may be tested, especially when we reach the time na palapit na palapit na po talaga, ano po, yun po pangbalik ng Panginoon, ano po, at alam naman po natin yung the signs of the last days when the Antichrist will appear and you will find that Christians will be persecuted, no? And those who will be left, ano po, those who will be left during the period of the tribulation and they continue to speak for the Lord and to believe in the Lord will continue to be persecuted. So, this is very important. We must be loyal first to God before people. Amen? We must be first loyal to God before people. So, I hope, my dear brothers and sisters, that this is clear in our hearts. No? Siguro, ang isa pong application po nito, yung baptism. No? Kailangan na po tayong mag-baptize, actually, no? in, uh, soon. And I hope and pray na wala pong maging agam-agam sa puso natin dahil meron po tayong ma-encounter no po, na disagreement or opposition that at the end of the day, God should be supreme in our hearts. God should be supreme in our hearts. 
the numbers two point kung saan po tayo dapat natin i-practice ang ating loyalty. We must be loyal second to our spouses. All right? We must be sec we must be loyal to our spouses. This already goes without saying, but reminding is a safeguard for married couples to always be loyal because again, our world is filled with what? With landmines for the destruction of marriages, no? Left and right, people are promiscuous. People are unfaithful, all right? So there will always be temptations because our world favors, encourages promiscuity, it encourages unfaithfulness, it encourages adultery, all right? It says in the Bible that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. So in Genesis 2.24 and in Ephesians 6.21-33, marriage is a covenant. Not just between the couple, but it is a covenant. Ito po ay isang tipanan. Ano po? Ito po ay isang pangako. Hindi lamang po sa isa't isa, pero tayo po ay nangako po sa harapan po ng Diyos. Alright? And marriage is a picture according to Ephesians chapter 5. It is a picture of Christ and the church. It is a picture of the relationship, the loyalty of Christ to the church, and the loyalty of church, the church to our Lord Jesus Christ, So, which is the bride of the Lord. That is why marriage is a picture of the gospel. It is a picture of the love between Christ, the Savior, and the church that is his bride. The Bible says that a mere look at a woman with lust is already adultery, which means a mere look at a woman with lust is already disloyalty, all right? It is already unfaithfulness to our spouses. In Matthew 5, it says, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully had already committed adultery with her in his heart. And po? Sometimes we say, I didn't commit adultery because I really did not do anything. No? I didn't pursue a woman. No? I didn't date a woman and all of those things. No? But here in the Bible, Jesus puts the standard that... We have already committed infidelity. We have already committed adultery, unfaithfulness, no? disloyalty, just by mere looking at a woman lustfully. So, siguro ito po ay isang pagpapaalala rin sa atin. Ano po? Because imagine the havoc that is being wreaked among husbands and wives today because of online pornography. All right? Now, that is betrayal. All right? That is betrayal. Pornography is unfaithfulness. It is adultery, no? It is an adulterous, sinful engagement, no? Sexual engagement with another person, no? I don't have to go into the details of that, no? But it is unfaithfulness, no? So, let's let's steer clear, no? of that sin, no? Umiwas po tayo dyan, mga kapatid, ano po? Alam po natin na talamak po yan ngayon sa internet. So tayo po ay umiwas, let us flee from the sexual temptation of porn. The third is, we must be loyal to God's people. Alright? We must be loyal to God's people. So first, loyalty to God. Loyalty to our spouse, second, and the third, loyalty to God's people. No, the God's people meaning His church. Let me read to you Ruth chapter Ruth chapter one. This is a most beautiful example of being loyal to God's people. Sabi po rito, now Elimelech, Naomi's, hus- Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. Now you, most of you know the story. Naomi and Elimelech left Bethlehem and and because of famine, they fled to Moab, which is of course outside of the will of God, no? Not because it was 
difficult, does it mean that we can already go outside of God's will, no? Now, there are two sons married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Kilian also died, and Naomi was left with her two sons and her husband. So what happened here is that Naomi now tells her daughters-in-law to go back to their own families, to their own folks, no? because Naomi was now going to return to Bethlehem by herself. Sabi po rito, then she kissed them goodbye and they wept aloud. Then Orpa kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. Now it says here, the other daughter-in-law, Ruth, clung to Naomi. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. All right? Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. So this is a very beautiful example of a woman who was formerly pagan and who became a believer, and her loyalty changed. Her loyalty changed and radically. Ruth turned her back from Moab and everything and everyone she knew in Moab, which was a pagan nation. All right? That's loyalty. All right? That's loyalty. And again, it is founded on our faith in the Lord. So was Ruth's, was Ruth's loyalty because of Naomi? It wasn't because of Naomi. It was because of the God of Naomi, whom Ruth now began to know and began to worship. Though Ruth had no idea what awaits her when she joins Naomi back to Bethlehem, she had decided to follow the one true God of Naomi, and there was no turning back. All right? There was no turning back. She has made a vital decision. She has made a decision that defined her entire life, even if it meant turning her back ano po, completely from the pagan nation Moab. She was now completely committed to Naomi and most of all to Naomi's God. No? Sabi, po ni, ng pangin, sabi po ni Ruth dito, Yung loyalty niya, nagbago, sabi niya, your people will be my people. No? Ganun po mga kapatid kapag ang isang tao ay naborn again. One evidence of a heart that was born again is that we now have a love for Christians. We now have a love for our fellow brothers and sisters. Amen? That is the evidence of a truly born again person. Meron na siya ngayong pagmamahal, meron na siya ngayong ano po, pag-ibig para po sa kanyang mga kapatiran kay Kristo. No? Iyon po rin ang isang reason kung bakit po tayo we know water baptized. No? When we are water baptized, it also means that we identify ourselves. We proudly identify ourselves with the church. Hindi po pwedeng kinakahiya natin yung church. No? Christian tayo, pero... No, pinapandirian natin yung mga churchmates natin, no? Iniisnab natin sila, sinusupladuhan natin yung mga churchmates natin. At hindi po po pwedeng ganoon, ano? Na ano po tayo sa kanila, no? Na critical tayo sa ating mga sa mga Kristiyano. Hindi po po pwedeng ganoon, ano? When we are truly born again, there is now a loving connection between us and our brothers and sisters. Sa ibang churches, mga kapatid, ano po, ang challenge po nila are members who would leave their local church and hop from one church to another for the slightest reasons. All right? I know of a case or an example of a husband and wife, a couple. They love theology. They love doctrine very much. But they cannot stay put in one local church, labas masok po sila. No? They cannot stay put in one local church. So, even if we know a lot of doctrines and theology, the question is, are we loyal? No? Are we loyal? Are we faithful? So, 
it tells a lot about our real spirituality. It tells a lot about our real maturity that when the going gets tough, we don't call it quits, no? But we continue to be dedicated and committed by faith, no? Of course, kung meron naman pong issue, no? Pagdating po sa, pagdating po sa doctrine that it already, the church already goes against, no? The essentials of the faith. Now, of course, we should leave, no? We should leave, no? If it already goes against the essentials of the faith, no? Primarily, the gospel. Now, in our church, no, dito po sa atin, sa ating church sa Baguio, at maging siguro po sa Pangasinan or sa Bayambang, ano po, karamihan ng ating mga members are either new believers or members who whose first church has always been our church, no, whose first church has always been our church, no. So, what is the challenge, no? The challenge in our loyalty to God and God's people is our business, no? Our business. Business sa work, sa career, alright? Sa business and business po sa ating personal lives, no? So, even that, no? Even that, kailangan po natin i-determine, ano po, kung yung atin pong loyalty sa atin pong mga kapatiran ay pupwedeng nacha-challenge po ng atin pong kabisihan sa atin pong mga sarili-sariling mga preoccupation sa atin pong mga personal lives, no? Lalong-lalo na po ngayon sa ating panahon na ito na pandemic, alright? Na merong excuse, no? Not to communicate, not to fellowship, no? Kasi nga po, pandemic, no? But, yun na nga po, kinakailangan po nating maging faithful at maging loyal pa rin sa isa't isa. Now, as most of you know, we are already applying for a permit to have a regathering, a physical regathering, even though only up to 25% of the seating capacity of the church is allowed for now in the city of Baguio, no? So, bakit po tayo nag apply na ng permit na makapag-regather po tayo? Among many reasons why we should take advantage of regathering again as a church despite the limited number of worshippers allowed is this. Because we need to keep the unity and the love among God's people aflame. Alright? Let me say that again. Why do we need, no? Why do we need to prioritize regathering? I know that the Lord is blessing, no? We know that the Lord is blessing our online ministry and more souls, more people are being reached. And aside from prioritizing also health protocols and safety and all those things, but why should we take advantage no, of this opportunity to regather kahit na 25% lang? Again, because we need to preserve the unity and God's love no, among the brethren. Unity and love among God's people need to keep burning, all right? Otherwise, we will be cold, and what we will be cold, no? And eventually, our church will break down, you know? We will become disunited. In Hebrews 10, remember, anong sabi po rito? Let us consider how to steer up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. My dear friends, according to this verse, no? We have a duty. We have a duty towards each other. Ano po iyon? So kahit po maganda yung ginagawa ng Lord doon sa ating pong online ministry, pero hindi natin po pwede i-forsake, i-neglect yung assembling together. Kasi sabi po ng Hebrews 10, we have to stir up, to stir up love and good works and we have to encourage one another and there is nothing that can ever replace physical, face-to-face -face assembly of God's people. No? We are not being forbidden by our government, so we should not forsake assembling together. No? Let us never forget that we are a church. We are a body of Christ. No? So, strange lang yung circumstance ngayon, pero hindi po ito yung normal, no? Unless we are in a persecuted nation, ano po, na 
na and still even in persecuted nations no Christians would risk no just to be able to gather and assemble themselves there will be a lot of adjustments when we meet physically when we gather but it's all right no the important thing is makita po tayo face to face no so when we regather uh, we all need to wear our face masks no even during the time of worship even the worship leader even myself i will have to wear a face mask when i preach no we also need to wear our face shields so we also do not know if we will be doing this also every sunday already or maybe twice a month or maybe once a month so we will uh, take it we will play it by ear no as we see how it all works out no but what we're saying is this is a thing that we cannot neglect or forsake so my dear brothers and sisters i would like to end with a story no a story that can give us a glimpse no of what loyalty means no to god and to his people if you remember in 2007, there was a group of 23 South Korean missionaries who were captured by the Taliban in Afghanistan. The Taliban separated the group, isolated them, and confiscated their possessions. One of the Korean women managed to hold on to her Bible. So this Korean woman ripped into 23 pieces the Bible and secretly gave each of these 23 missionaries a portion so that wherever they are, each person could read a part of scripture when no one was watching. Now the group knew that the Taliban had decided to kill them one at a time. One by one, the missionaries surrendered their lives again to Jesus saying, Lord, if you want me to die for your sake, I'll do it. And then the pastor said, I have talked to the Taliban because they are going to start killing us and I've told their leaders that if anyone dies, I die first because I am your pastor. Another said, no, because I am also pastor and I'm your elder, so I die first. Then the pastor came back and said, you are not ordained. I have been ordained, so I die first. And sure enough, he died first. Two more were killed before the rest were eventually rescued. They had demonstrated extraordinary loyalty to God and to each other. The South Korean missionaries were following in the footsteps of the apostles in the New Testament. They showed extraordinary loyalty. So my dear brothers and sisters, just as the Lord Jesus Christ is faithful and wow, the Lord Jesus Christ is very, very loyal to us, even to the point of death. May that also be manifested through the enabling of the Holy Spirit, that we should be loyal to God, we should be loyal to our spouses, and we should be loyal to the people of God. Let us now prepare our hearts. Let's enter into a time of prayer. Tayo po ay dumulog sa pananalangin. Magpuri po tayo sa Panginoon. Our loving Heavenly Father, we bless you, we praise you, and we worship you, dear Lord. Indeed, Lord, who can be compared with you, Indeed, Lord, who is your equal, you are the one true God. You are from everlasting to everlasting, O Lord God. You are, O Lord, the self-existent God, the self-sufficient God. And we are, O Lord, your creation. We are, O Lord, Father in heaven. Kami po ay mga nilikha po ninyo, Panginoon. Father God, and you have sovereign dominion over all your creation, including our lives. Father God, and we thank you, we praise you that nothing is too difficult for you, Lord God. There is nothing that is too hard for you, dear Lord. We praise you and we bless your holy name, dear Lord. We, O oh God, commit to you our whole hearts. We commit to you, Lord, our full trust. Father, maraming marami pong salamat. Nakila po kayo, Panginoon. You are the source of life. You are the source, O oh Lord, of our living you are the source of our strength the source of our joy O oh god the source of our peace O oh lord and father in heaven we take this time lord to just magnify you and to praise you and to offer you lord praise glory honor and power and the thanksgiving that is due your name O oh lord maraming maraming pong salamat father we want to thank you dear lord for your word 
We thank you, Father in heaven, for reminding us, O Lord, of the Christ-like, O Lord, attitude, O God, the Christ-like characteristic, O Lord God, of being loyal, O Lord, in our relationships to the people that you have put in our lives, and most especially to you, Father God. And Father, we pray, Lord God, that you will help us to cultivate loyalty, Father in heaven, to you, Lord, to our beloved spouses, O oh God, to our Lord families, Father God, and help us to cultivate loyalty, Lord God, to your people, Father God. Just as Ruth said, your people will be my people, your God will be my God. Strengthen, dear Father God. Lord, your church, not just gospel of grace, but we pray for the universal church of God that you will strengthen, O oh Lord, our love, our unity, O oh Lord God. In truth, O oh Lord, you will strengthen, O oh God, our loyalty, Lord, to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Marami pong salamat, Panginoon. And Father, we pray, Lord, for gospel of grace. Pinapanalangin namin, Panginoon, ang amin pong plan for a regathering, O Lord. We pray that our permit will be approved. And Father, we pray that you will put in our hearts the longing, the anticipation, O God, Father in heaven, the expectation, O Lord God, to be able to steer love and good works and encouragement, Lord, to our brothers and sisters, O God. For this is your will, O Lord. For this, O God, is... Lord, part of your plan, O Lord God, so that we may continue to grow. We may continue, O God, to deepen in our relationship with you, O Lord, and with your children, Father God. Marami pong salamat, Panginoon. Father in heaven, pinapanalangin din po namin sa inyo, O Lord God, ang aming pong patuloy na ministry online. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness every Tuesday, Thursday, and on, Sat on Sundays. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, O oh God, that enables us to be able, O oh Lord, to do this, Lord, every week. It is all by your grace. And, Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory and the thanks. And we thank you, Lord, that you have not disappointed, Lord, Father, our faith in you. Truly, you are at work, Father God, powerfully. Maraming maraming pong salamat, Panginoon. Pinupuri po namin kayo, O God. And Lord, I just commit to you, dear Father God, lahat po ng mga brethren namin, Panginoon, na kayo po, Lord, ang magsustain lamang, Panginoon, sa kalakasan ng bawat isa, lalong-lalo na po sa mga yaon, Panginoon, O God, na hindi na po namin, Lord, na... Lord, nakakausap, O oh Lord God. Ngunit sila ay patuloy, Panginoon, na nakikinig sa inyong mga salita. And Father, we pray, Father God, na saan man sila, Panginoon, at ano man ang kanilang ginagawa, ay patuloy niyo po silang bibigyan, Panginoon, ng freshness ng inyo pong presensya, Panginoon. Marami pong salamat, Panginoon. We thank you, Father God. At this time, let's come before the Lord. Ipag-pray po natin sa Panginoon ang ating pong bansa sa panahon po na ito. Let's come before the Lord. Let's pray for our country. We pray, Lord, for our, our country, Lord, ang aming pong bansa, Panginoon. Uh, patuloy niyo pong ibuwas ang inyong awa, Panginoon, sa amin. Yes, Panginoon. Ang po namin, Panginoon, na uh, sa pagdami pa, Panginoon, ng mga yes. na-intect, Panginoon, we ask, Lord, that you will be in control, oh Lord, of yes, Lord. the lives of these people. We pray, O Lord, that they will call upon you, Panginoon, that you will heal them, that less people will, Lord, will will die, O God, of this, uh, you know, of this disease, Lord. We pray, O God, for your hand, O God, to be upon them. Panginoon, that at times like this, Lord, people will call upon you, they will, they will open their hearts, O God, to you. And Lord, and we pray that saving saving faith, O God, shall come upon their lives, Lord, upon their hearts, Lord. At dalangin po namin, Panginoon, na marami po malitas, Panginoon. Do not allow, O God, Lord, these people to perish, Lord. We pray that salvation shall come upon them. Panginoon, we pray, O God, for the ministry, O God, of your churches, that it will indeed, O God, be bear fruit, Lord, abound, O God, during these times of, uh, of a great need, O God, for salvation. 
We pray, Lord, that you will indeed move, O oh God, in a mighty and powerful way. Let your spirit, O oh God, move, Lord, in a mighty and powerful way. Yes, Lord. Lord, we pray, O oh God, for our, our, our leaders, that you will continue to move, O oh Lord, and grant them, Lord, your wisdom, Lord, as to how they would manage, O oh God, this crisis, Lord. Yes, Lord. Panginoon, it is indeed a great uh, challenge, Lord, to balance, to make decisions, Lord, Lord in balancing, Lord, the infection and our economic situation. We pray that you will move, O oh God, in a mighty and and lead my, mighty way to to grant them, Lord, the the wisdom, Panginoon, as to how they would address this uh, problem, Lord. Yes, Lord. Panginoon, maraming salamat po, Panginoong Diyos, na kami po ay makatatawag po sa inyo. At hindi po kami mawawalan ng pag-asa, Panginoon, dahil kayo po ang may hawak lahat ng nangyayari sa buong mundo, Panginoon. And your will, O Lord, will be done at the end of time, O Lord. And yes, we know, Lord, that's, that this stage that we are in right now is a preparation, O Lord, for your coming, Lord. Amen. And we pray, O Lord, yes. na kayo po, Panginoon, ang patuloy na maghari, Panginoon, sa lahat po ng mga nangyayari sa buong, bu bu sa buong mundo, Panginoon. Maging sa aming bansa, Panginoon. And we thank you, O God, for our frontliners. We pray that you will continue to move, O Lord, in their behalf, in their in their hearts, O God, in their strength, Lord. Strengthen them, O God. Panginoon, with power, Lord, to be able to serve those who are in need, O God. And we pray, Lord, that they will call upon you as well, Panginoon. Salamat po, Panginoon Diyos, Lord. Thank you, O God, for Indeed, we will not run out of hope, for we have you as our hope. Panginoon, you are the hope of our glory, O God. And we thank you, O Lord, for being so sa aming pong mga buhay. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa gabi pong ito. At kayo po lamang aming pong patuloy na hintayin, Panginoong Diyos, na mag sumagot, Panginoon, sa lagpag ng panalangin na ito. Maging Panginoon sa pagkilo sa aming mga puso, in response, O God, to the message that you have given us tonight. Salamat po, Panginoon. Strengthen your people, O God, Panginoon, for your work, O God. Panginoon, salamat po, Lord. We bless you. We thank you for tonight, Lord. All this we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good night po sa ating lahat. Tayo po ay pagpalain po ng Panginoon. May the peace of God reign in our hearts. Amen.